Thursday at 9 a.m. on the street, 919 FM radio. Every week we will journey into the amazing word of God. So please join us. See you then. Right. Good morning, Trina and Tobago again. We are live with Pastor Garcia, Valentine Garcia Jr. and his wife, Pastor Nikki Garcia, who is with us on the street, 919 FM. No, I, I, I urge you to go into our Facebook page so that you can see them. I know you just hear them all the time, but now you're going to be able to see what they look like, <laughs> um, which I am very happy for. I see they have a guest with them also this morning. And I, <laughs> so again, we want to thank them very much for being with us on the Street 919 FM. I want to just remind you, I know that some of you have been, um, have questions that you want to ask. Um, I urge you to write down your questions. And about, I think, 10, 15 minutes before the end of the program, he will take calls and he will answer only questions that is relevant to what they are talking about. All right, so whatever the discussion is going to be about, those are the questions that they are willing to answer today. So I think I've said enough. I want to hand you over to Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr. I like the jersey, man. I like the jersey. I, I, I think I might have to put in an order for one. All right. I, 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 no problem, no problem. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you once again for joining us. Uh, here this morning on this program on the street. Um, I just want to, before we get started, just uh, welcome with us again, um, ministers uh, Andre and, and Carla Outlaw with us this morning. They're going to be joining us again. Uh, we love having them with us. And my wife is here with me, um, Nikki Garcia. So as we get started this morning, Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that you have opened our eyes to be able to see this wonderful world of yours, Lord Father God. We thank you for everything you're doing. And even in the midst of everything going on, Lord, you have still protected us. You, you have still kept us. And we thank you, Lord God. We give you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory in Jesus' almighty name. Lord, as we go through your word this morning, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to understand scripture. Give us understanding, Lord God. I pray in these times, in these last days, Lord God, that you would give us Lord God, a uh, 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 wisdom, Lord God, I pray that you would give us direction, Lord Father God, in Jesus' almighty name. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we get started this morning, you know, uh, week number one, we spoke about obedience. And then week number two, we spoke about understanding. Those are two big, big and major topics that... Um, we have, you know, problems going on with the world today. And then week three, we spoke about deception. And I think today we want to continue uh, talking about deception this morning because that's such a huge topic. And I think deception is one of the things that uh, is really affecting um, our world as we know it today, our culture. Uh, even in the church today, deception has creeped in. And deception is causing so many issues, so many problems. So we just want to continue and talk about that because we want to make sure that we address it and that you understand exactly what it is that's going on. There's so many people that are uh, living today in, 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 in these uh, alternative realities and understandings and not even really understanding that they're being deceived um, by the enemy. Um, it tells us in the Bible, as we started last week in Genesis chapter 3, it tells the story of, um, of Eve. And when the enemy, which the Bible starts off in chapter 3 saying, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast which was in the field which the Lord had made. People feel, we, we live in a time where folks feel that they are so smart. We live in a time where people feel that they know everything. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to go outside to people because uh, in today's world, as parents, we have our young children at home and they think they know so much. They think they know more than we do because, you know, they have access to, to, to social media and to the Internet and all these other things. So they feel like the little wisdom that they have, they're deceived into thinking that they know better than the adults. My mom always says, uh, you know, she, she, she always puts it plain and says, you know, uh, 
45 can't see or doesn't know what 60 can see or knows. And it's true because, you know, uh, she, you know, my mom's in her early 60s and she's been around for 60 something years. And I've only been on the planet for, you know, for 40 something years. So there's a there's a huge gap. There's a 20, 20 plus year gap gap in there where there, there are things that she has seen. There's experiences that she may have had that I have not seen or have had yet that if I would just listen to the advice, if I would just follow direction, then, uh, you know, things would be a little bit easier for me. But uh, there comes a point in all of our lives where we feel like, you know, because we know what we think we know, we're wiser, we're smarter. And, you know, we got it all figured out. And we have all the answers when that's not the case. So the Bible says that now the serpent was more cunning than any beast in the field, which meaning that he was smart. He, he, there, there is some knowledge there, right? And one of the things uh, that you can do is going into a battle and underestimating yeah. your enemy. Going into battle and underestimating your enemy. That's one of the tricks of the devil is that he, al- he, 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 he allows you and I to underestimate just how smart, just how cunning, and just how dangerous he is. I want to encourage you today, don't go into battle underestimating the person that you're fighting against. Don't go into battle underestimating the person that you're fighting again against. As we talk about deception again this morning, being deceived. We look at everything that's going on in our world today, and, and we just see a, a, a total uh, change around from everything that uh, was before compared to what is now in this season, in this time that we're in. Things are totally different. Uh, family values are different. Uh, the way we operate is different. Um, even when it comes to the constitution of marriage, that in itself is different. The way that young people date is different. All of these things have changed, and it's all because of deception. You know, when we talk about deception, one of the things that I want you to understand is that we say, okay, hey, the enemy is smart and he's cunning, right? And, you know, it, the Bible even says that he's a worthy adversary, meaning that you think that, you know, hey, no, 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 I got this. I know what I'm doing. The Bible, have, you know, the devil has led us to believe that, you know, hey, once you accept Jesus, you know, that's all you need. That's good enough. That, that that's, that's good enough. You, you know, you're good. And, and, and no matter what you do after that, um, you are, you're okay in the sight of the Lord. And that's not correct because that's why we have the Bible, which, which is our instructions in order to help us to live the life that God wants us to live, to live according to God's will for our lives. That is what helps us to direct us to be able to live in God's will for our lives. Now, one of the things that I was reading in this, you know, in the scripture before, um, I, you know, I passed the mic is that it says right here that um, the devil came and he, 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 he got into Eve's ear, right? We I always encourage, be careful who you allow into your ear. Be careful who you're listening to. I know a lot of times that, that we go through problems and we go through issues before we run to God or before we run to Jesus, we run to people. And, you know, you have to be careful who you give your ear to. Because here's one of the things that I do understand now. It says, when the devil spoke to Eve and he convinced Eve to eat the apple, the next thing that happened was Eve went to Adam. And I was thinking this morning that before we, get, before we got started, one of the sayings that we hear all the time is that hurt people hurt people. Meaning when people are hurt, then they hurt other people. Well, I can say that, but I can also say this. Deceived people deceive people. Because Eve was deceived, the next move that she made, made was to deceive Adam. And hence the reason we're in the situation that we're in today. I want to encourage you because people feel like, well, you know, um, my friends won't deceive me. Sometimes even my family won't deceive me. But here's the thing. You have to use wisdom because the Bible tells us deceive people, as we see in this example, Eve, deceive people. She went straight to Adam and she told him 
the same story. And then Adam was also deceived. I want to encourage you today that we ought to be careful who we're lending our ear to. Hence the reason we have to make sure that we, um, we, 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 we're in God's word. Hence the reason we have to make sure that we understand what it is that God is saying. Because if we understand what God is saying, then it gives us the ability to use what we call understanding and discernment to make the correct decisions. Understanding the difference between what is right and understanding the difference between what is wrong. And when we don't, we become deceived and we fall into the trap. We fall into the trap. We fall into the trap. So um, I I actually really like that you said deceive people, deceive people. That was really big. Um, I have a women's group and we meet once a week and we are kind of going over the book of James. And one of the things it says in James is let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Uh, for he cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted in he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And that is in James 1, uh, 13 through 15. Because 15 said, and when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Um, if we liken that to the first sin, we go back to where Eve was drawn in by her lust. She wanted to taste it. She wanted to share it. She wanted to uh, have this thing that was not supposed to be for her. But I think that what we want to always be mindful, as we spoke on last week, is bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. So... We have to be guarded and be very mindful of what we allow into our spirit, into our world, into our uh, mindset. Um, we often speak on the world as it is today, but the Bible says that we are not supposed to be conformed to the ways of the world. It, uh, be ye not conformed to the ways of the world. We are supposed to draw ourselves out of and fall into out of the world and fall into God and into his rules and into what he has for us. Um, but that also means that we have to be guarded. We have to know the word. We have to write it on our hearts so that when the enemy does come to tempt us, because it, the enemy knows the word too, that we are able to rightfully discern right from wrong. Yeah, and I, and I like what you said right there is that uh, the enemy will come in and deception starts with uh, enticement, enticement. And I know that in today's world, um, a lot of things are beginning to look attractive to people. And attraction uh, is one of the things that would lead to deception. Attraction leads to deception. Thinking that we need things or looking at someone else and uh, seeing what they have or what they're doing and wanting those same things, even if it doesn't, even if it goes against what it is that uh, we need or what the Bible says we should have or the things that we should be doing. When we talk about deception, deception is somebody trying to convince you, just as the enemy convinced Eve, convince you that you should do something that goes against what God says. Well, you know, if you, it, 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 it has that work. If you do this, see, the problem is God just don't want you to know and, and, and have the knowledge that he has. But if you have it, you'll be just as good as, right? Just like young people, um, deception is if your parents ask you not to do something, sometimes you may not even understand the why, but obedience says if they ask me or if they tell me not to, then I shouldn't. But then deception comes in, man, why your parents be you know, why your parents act like that? They just don't want you to have fun. Just because they they didn't have fun or they couldn't have fun, now they're trying to stop you from doing, you know, what is good for you. 
deception starts to come into play. Deception where, you know, you're enticed by something that seems like it may be uh, fun, something that it, that feels like it may be uh, good or enjoyable. Um, and, you know, and, and, and you're enticed to want to do that right now, even if it goes against your standards, your morales, or even what the Bible says. You know, um, I remember before when we were growing up, we were younger, you know, dating was something that, 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 you know, there was integrity in dating. Well, now, you know, it's, 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 it's totally different. The deception is, you, you know, Hey, um, it's okay. You, you know, you meet some, you know, dating is like going out test driving a car. You know, you're shopping for a car and, and you, you know, you go to different dealerships uh, to check out some cars, you test drive it, you see how it is. And, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. And then you keep going until uh, you find the one that you feel like it works for you. Well, that's how, you know, that's how young people date today. They, they just go out and they meet somebody, you know, hey, we, you know, we may go on a date and we talk and, and then, you, you know, I test drive you and yeah, you, you may work, maybe you can't work. And then, you, you, you know, you hop to the next thing or the next person. And society says that that is okay. The world says that that is okay, and the young people are following suit into, you know, what society says is okay. If we look at the world today, that's why we have so many of these situations. I listened to a pastor, and he said, you know, that's why divorce is so rampant today. Because unlike before, when, you know, dating was something that that was, you know, a a, 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 a a lot more serious and, and, and you know, and, and people didn't just take it lightly. Well, now, you know, young people don't communicate the first little argument, the first little fallout. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going my separate way. You know, I can't deal with you anymore. I don't want to deal with this. The ability to communicate, the ability to work through stuff is not there anymore because the norm is the minute I get upset, the minute something happens, the minute uh, that things don't look the way I feel it should look, I'm out the door. Well, when you start practicing that from an early age, when, when that deception has been put into place from an early age, and when you get older and you feel like it's time to get serious and you meet someone, well, guess what? That behavior, that attitude, that mentality is still there and it's carried over into the adult life because this has become the norm. Deception says things that are wrong are now norms. Things that are wrong are now norm because it's something that I've been doing. It's something, you know, it's not something that I just started, but it's something that I'm doing and something that I've done for a long time. So, you know, so, so, you know, so people do it, young people do it because they think that it's okay. And this is what they know. And no one is correcting anyone. So hence the reason that these things are Uh, uh, you know, these behaviors have now become the norm. Things that wasn't wasn't like that. And people say, well, you know, times are changing. Deception says times are changing and these are the new normals. But here's the thing. In Hebrews 13 and 8, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? And times may change, but Jesus doesn't change. Times may change, but God doesn't change. And that's what deception comes in and tells us that, hey, the rules are changing and it's okay to adjust with the rules or the world. You know, hey, times have changed. So, you know, you'll hear people say, well, you know, before people used to get married because marriage they understood was for richer or poorer for better or for worse so we knew when we got married we were in there things will happen bumps in the road will come along but we were in there this is what we did well now you have people say well you know um i'm not going to get married because i don't want to get divorced but what i will do is i you know we'll live together we'll, we'll, shack we'll shack up we'll you know we'll have children we'll operate as a married couple but we won't commit or we won't do what's right in the sight of the Lord because in the event something happens, in the event something happens, we can just go our separate ways and it won't be considered divorce. But in the meantime, we're living in sin. Mm -hmm. We're living in sin. Go ahead. Hey Amen. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Back to what Nikki was saying about the Bible tells us about being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm -hmm. And studying here is deception and we know who the deceptor is 
is Satan. Mm -hmm. So we know he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. So the world has been transformed to Satanology, I would say, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. what Minister Garcia just said, everything now that we know is wrong has become the, the norm. True. And deceived by the world because we don't even understand God's voice. We read the Bible, but we still don't understand his voice. Luke's, when I was looking at Luke chapter 22, when Jesus was talking to Simon Peter, chapter 22, verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, that really blew my mind because he said, Simon. Now, remember, Simon is Peter. He's not, he's, his, his name hadn't changed yet. He's Simon. And he said, hey, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. And I'm like, wow. So Satan went to, went to God and said, hey, I need to do this to Peter. I need to get Peter. And, and as I was looking at that, the serpent was in the garden. How he manipulated Eve. And Eve invited Adam to take a bite of that. And then we know sin came into the world. And then verse 32 said, but I have prayed for you that your faith shall not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. And mm -hmm. then verse 33 said, but he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you. All the time we said we're ready. We're going to do what God say do. Think about it. You, you're deceiving yourself when you make those type statements because you're not really understanding what you're saying. It sounds real good. It said, you both, and then it said, but he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Now, Simon said, I got you, God. I'm with you. I'm down with you now. Then he said, I tell you, Peter. Now, remember, he was Simon in the church first. Now he's Peter. Here it is now. Then he said, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you would deny me three times that you know me. Now, Peter, with his understanding of God and with all that excitement and knowing that he was walking with him, he said, I got your back. I got you. But Jesus told him right then, Peter, you don't even know what you're talking about. Because right now, bro, you're not even ready. And what happens to the world, we're not ready because we have let the, the world infiltrate our belief our understanding of the word of God. And most of all, what we understand is how people interpret the Bible and we never get the interpretation ourselves. Right. And when I was looking at that, I was like, wow, because every situation that we have been studying about, Satan went to get permission. Mm. He did not have no just authority to just walk up and say, Minister Garcia, what's going on? He had to go to God and talk to God about what he wanted to do. It was two different things between uh, Eve and we talked about Job. Eve got a chance to meet the serpent, the, the serpent in the garden. Job never seen anyone. Job just stood on what his belief was. He didn't get the message. He didn't get the memo. Hey, Satan came and asked about you, Job, and your, your whole family going to die and all this right here. Job didn't experience the warning. He did not experience the warning because of the position he was in with God. Eve had the warning in the gun because he was told not to bite of that tree. So she had the warning. So what happens is we get the warning, but we don't get the understanding. Yeah, you know, know, go ahead. You know, you know, as you said that, it just it it just made me think about something. You know, one of the things that 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 we have to understand in you know in 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 Job, um, when the enemy went before the Lord, God was the one that that uh, suggested that suggested Job. God suggested Job, and I'm sitting here thinking, and you know, as we talk about um, you know in these last days, and people say the excuses, well, you know, times are changing, and you know, the old days are the old days, and this is the new days. God was the one that suggested Job. And, you know, the Bible tells us that God was proud of Job. Mm -hmm. God was proud. God was actually proud of Job to the fact of, you know, as a parent, uh, if something comes up and, you know, you have that child that you are proud of, that you can say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to send Mary 
to do this job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send John to do this job. And you have all faith and all confidence in that child. That is an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, how many of us can say that today that, that, you know, if something comes up, we can proudly say, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. I can't be there. But in my place, I can send John. I can send Mary. And because of the way that the world is shaped and formed and how things are going on right now, how many, I want you to think this morning, how many of us can truly say that if God was to suggest us to go through some of the things that Job went through, how many of us would God be proud of? How many of us would God truly be proud of that God can suggest us mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is my servant. Give him a try. Mm -hmm. Give him a try. And that's actually scary because you know what? Some, you know, so often we hear people going through, you know, and not to minimize anybody's problems or issues, but some of us, and I tell people sometimes it's like, man, you know, the little problems that we go through, we run crying with our tails between our legs. The little small issues that we have, we're ready to turn away from God. The little small problems that we face, we're ready to put this whole Christian thing aside and, you know, hey, I'm done. You know, God's not good and God's not faithful and, you know, and God this and God that. The little small problems. I remember I was in a class and one of the teachers, they, they showed a video and it was like, you know, um, they were talking about here in America. And it's like, you know, here in America, you know, uh, some of the problems that people have are problems that they place on themselves. Because in America, if you're hungry, there are places you can go to get food. You don't have to be hungry unless you want to be hungry. If you don't have money, there are places that will help you to get money. If you're homeless, there are places that will help you to get a roof over your head. These things will be provided for you. Whereas in some other countries, the problems that they have, if we were to exchange places, the problems that they have would break the backs of people who have these issues that they don't even understand what problems really are. And yet still, the people with the real problems are the ones who are more faithful. The people who have less are the ones who are more faithful than the ones who have so much. And the thing is, the ones who have so much, who have, you know, the, the, the roof over the head, the, you know, the food, the, the health, the, all of these things that, that they take for granted are the ones who are deceived into thinking that they, they should have or deserve even more for nothing. But I think that's where faith comes in. When you have little, you put your faith in God. You, if you don't know where your next meal is coming from, when you get a meal, you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because I didn't know. When you have a lot, you start to put your faith in yourself. You start to be deceived that you are your your own grantor of life. You start to say, oh, I did this. It becomes an I thing and no longer a God thing. Um, you, you, your faith is just placed wrong. It's, it's placed wrong. You know, so we talk about, and I want to kind of go back to, to the family, the deception, because that's one of the biggest things. I remember, I, you know, uh, a pastor had said before, if you destroy the family unit, you destroy the world. Agreed. If you destroy the family unit, you destroy the world. And Amen. one of the things that the enemy is focusing on, just like in the garden, he came after Eve, and then Eve went to Adam, boom, kicked out the garden. Family kicked out the garden, right? Well, the enemy is up to the same thing now. If I destroy the family I'll start with the family structure. Hey, you know what? I'll make this omnity between the man and the woman. You know, they're at odds. You know, then if they're at odds, then guess what? Then the children are, 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 are left to just do whatever they want. Hey, if daddy won't tell me yes, mommy will tell me yes. Mommy and daddy is mad at each other. So guess what? I'm going to go to this person because I know this person, you know, wants me to be their favorite right now. And then we begin to, de and then the family begins to de deteriorate. And this behavior becomes acceptable so much so that we don't even realize and understand that when the enemy attacks the family and we allow him to come into our homes and we stray from the Bible before there was a time where, you know, that, you know, there was a standard. The Bible talks about having a standard. There was a standard. Right. And, you know, when we had that standard and we did certain things, then then then, then you know, things turned out a certain way. 
You know, I always tell people now, if you, if a lot of us as adults in our, you know, in, in our thirties and our forties and in our fifties or sixties, we were raised a certain way with certain, uh, requirements. Uh, we had, a, you know, we have a good work ethic. Uh, we are respectable. Um, there's some things that we understand. There's some behaviors that, that we abso- absolutely don't do because even in this old age, as a matter of fact, I just had a visitor at my house um, and she's, you know, and she's older than I am. And, you know, every time she, 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 you know, she was here, she said, you know, please. And thank you. You know, even though when she walked into Hey, you know, you're, you're just as family. Hey, you don't have to ask me to go in the refrigerator. You don't have to ask for anything. Just help yourself. You are most welcome. Every single time she would ask because that's how she was raised. That's how, you know, that's all she knew. And if that's all you know, when you're raised with the right foundation, this is all you can put out. But now people are being, you know, just raised any kind of how, um, you know, they're, they're doing any kind of thing with the expectation that, you know, things are going to be okay. So in uh, Second Timothy, Carla, did you want to say something? Yeah, ahead, I just want to say, um, uh, you made a very good point about destroying the family. And I just wanted to say that deception carries over. And then we get, it takes us over into generational curses. Because mm-hmm. whatever doors you open, that t- if no one stops it, then that tends to uh, pass down generation after generation. So That's not right. it's destroying the immediate family, but it's transcending. It's going, you know, it's carrying over to the next generation and the next generation. So you are really just killing, you know, generation after generation. So that's why it's important. Um, uh, We're not supposed to be of the world, but we're supposed to be transformed. Our mind is to be renewed. And in renewing our mind, we are not to be thinking like the world. We are now supposed to be taking on the characteristics of God. So that means we need to be operating as if, as if um, we should be operating just as God, just as God was operating. We should be mimicking Him. We should be following Him, doing the things that He would do, even in our thinking. And we can't just rely on our mind. We have to go to Him. We have to draw. The Bible tells us we have to draw not unto Him. And drawing not unto him, then he he leads us, he guides us. That means that we set our will aside to follow him and pick up his will. Amen. I agree. I mean, our fundamentals are we are Christians, which means we are supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be following in the footsteps of Christ, doing the things that he did. He said, All these things that I do, you can do it too. But you have to pick up and follow him. So I agree. If we call ourselves Christians, then we have to be Christians. We have to follow Christ's lead. We have to try to be Christ-like. We have to become less so that God can become more. Yep. You know, as, 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 as we talk about family and destructions, and one of the things that, that, that are destroying families the most is values. Values, so lack of, the lack of Christian values to where there were values before, where before respecting elders, it wasn't, a, it wasn't optional. These things were mandatory because that's what the Bible required. You know, uh, the Bible talks about young men, you know, old men teaching old women, you know, older women teaching younger women, older men teaching young men about respecting your elders, about respecting your parents. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in one of the Ten Commandments, honor your mother and your father. Um, And if you do so, your days will be young. Well, guess what? We see a lot of young people dying today. And guess what? Those young people, if you don't follow the rules of the word, if you don't follow God's word, then, then a lot of times, a lot of times, then we forget that there are consequences for not doing what it is the world, the word says that we ought to do. We see a lot of young people dying today. A lot of young people dying because, you know, and their lives are being cut short. And you, you ask yourself, you ask yourself the question, some of them, you know, God has decided to take, but some of them, you ask yourself, well, why, why? And, and, and these things are becoming so normal today. And, 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 you know, and it's crazy. Our family values are changing. We're hearing things today that we didn't hear before. You know, before when we were growing up younger, you, you didn't often see parents burying children. That wasn't normal. But now today, that's, that's become so 
normal. You know, we don't understand as you know, as we're talking about consequences, we don't understand that that you know, uh, sometimes consequences don't show up overnight or the next day. They show up over a period of time. So much so that in the Bible, in Second Timothy chapter three, listen to this right here. It says. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. There will be very difficult times. Remember, the Bible was written over 2,000 years ago, right? There will be very difficult times. For people will love themselves and their money. If we don't live in that time today, if we don't live in that time right now, this is the Bible right here you know, showing us what we have become because of what we have done or what we have allowed or we, or or this deception that we have allowed to blind us from the things that are right, from the things that are are, are, are godly. The Bible says, uh, God says, be holy for I am holy. And that's it. It it doesn't say be holy for I am holy. uh, You know, please, or, 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 you know, or if you can, it says, be holy for I am holy. That's it. That's it. So it goes on to say, in the last days, people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. If we don't live in a time today where people are just as ungrateful and entitled, and entitled it says they will consider nothing to be sacred. If we don't live in that time today, where it was a time where if you were a pastor or you were a pastor, or even if you were a Christian, there was a respect that came, hey, 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 look, hey, you know, they're Christians. We don't, you know, don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, don't do this. Even today, even today, you know, uh, there's certain things you wouldn't even be invited to because people understood that there was a standard. No, no, no. You know, I'm, as a matter of fact, there were some places that as a Christian you would go and folks would tell you, hey, now nah, you ain't supposed to be here, man. You know, yo, go, this ain't for you. Yeah. But the, the world has changed today where, where, where not only are we allowed, where, where we are allowed, but now we're invited because we have no standard and we're just as common as everyone else. Because, the, yeah. you know, the there's deception no is... The deception is there's no separation. It says that they will consider nothing sacred, nothing sacred. People come to church any kind of way, any kind of behavior, any kind of thing, any kind of attitude. You know, it, you know, before those things were not even, I don't even have to say tolerated. It was just not done. But deception says that everything is okay. It says they will be unloving. If we don't live in a world that's unloving today, unloving, unforgiving, they will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. If we don't live in that time today, it says they will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love pleasure rather than God. They will act righteous, act righteous. We hear people today don't even know God. My God, my God going to do it. My God, it, it, you know, it's just everything just flows out of the mouth. Like it's, 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 it's nothing. People use, the, you know, God's name in vain today. It says they will act righteous, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. And then the Bible tells us, even as Christians today, it tells us in these times, stay away from people like that. from these people. When the enemy deceives us and he begins to destroy the family unit, then out of the destruction of the family comes this. I want to get you to continue because it goes on to say they are the kind that work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of the vulnerable. Um, that's big. The people who are going against God and they are even Christians, we have to be guard ourselves. They are working their way into our homes. Carla spoke on generational curses. You spoke on how the home is just becoming so divided. And you have to be careful. The enemy is working his way into our home. They're puffing us up. They're making us feel that we can't do better than God. That's exactly what made the enemy fall. That's how it that's how Satan fell from heaven. And had to be here on earth. And Satan is trying to keep us here on earth and not allow us to go back to God. So guard your 
salvation. Deception. Deception. One of the biggest things that I want you to see here, it, it says they are the kind of people who will work their way into your homes and win your confidence. Remember, we started off saying, be careful, because deceived people deceive people. Just like hurt people hurt people. You know, when someone's in a relationship, uh, when a woman's in a relationship and, you know, she, she has some you know, some issues with the man, he wasn't nice to her, he was mean, he cheated on her, he did some things. Well, when she goes into another relationship, she becomes guarded. She becomes guarded. And not that she wants to be, not that she wants to be um, uh, 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 mean or, or she wants to hurt the, you know, the person that she's with, but she becomes guarded because of the pain or the, 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 the trust issues that she may have had or the things that may have transpired. Well, uh, so now in the next relationship, she's totally different. She has a wall up. She's guarded. She, she's not able to show, you know, love or, or get trust or be loyal to this new person because of what she's experienced in the past relationship. Just, just so it is deceive people, deceive people. Sometimes people are being deceived because of people who will work themselves into your life, work themselves into your situation, is the folks around you sometimes. Again, family members, man, I, you know, I, look, we, we grew up in the same Christian home and, I, and I'm doing this and it's working for me. So, you know, hey, it'll work for you. You know, well, I'm doing this and I'm having a good time doing it. So, you know, I don't see why, you know, you can't do it as well. You know, I mean, you know, hey, I'm doing it and nothing's happening to me. So what's the problem? You know, maybe God just don't want you to have fun. You know, uh, uh, you know, if you do this, it's not that bad. You know, God knows one of the biggest thing. One of the biggest thing is you hear people say, uh, um, "God knows my heart," and God under God understands. No, God doesn't understand sin. God doesn't understand. God. Everything about God speaks against sin. And what I want to encourage you to understand today is that deception leads to distraction. Deception leads to distraction. And when you are distracted, you become unguarded. And when you are unguarded, that's when the enemy comes in and he is able to kill, to steal, to kill and destroy. You open your eyes and boom, you end up in a place where you have no clue how you ended up there, how you get there or how you get out because you have been deceived which made you now become distracted. And now that you are distracted, you're open to be defeated, destroyed by the enemy. Listen, the enemy's goal is to keep as many people out of heaven as he possibly can and not keep you out to come to his party, but keep you out to torment you for the rest of eternity. That's what's at stake. The enemy doesn't want to have fun with you. He doesn't want to play with you. As a matter of fact, just like in the Bible, when the enemy tried to tempt Jesus, you know, but Jesus, because he had that word in him, what do you have inside of you today? Distraction says, I don't have to read the word. I'm good. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. Distraction, you know, uh, 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 deception tells you that you don't have to, you don't have to really uh, uh, get deep into it. You don't have to spend t as much time with God. You know, you don't have to, this de deception tells you that you don't have to be the person that God is calling you to be, mm -hmm. to do the things that God is asking you to do. Deception leads to distraction. Distraction leads to destruction. Deception leads to distraction. Distraction leads to destruction. Too many of us are being destroyed. Our families are being destroyed because we are being deceived. The, the feeling and the thinking that everything that's going on today, the world is changing. We hear it. Young people, they hear it in the music. They, they, you know, they see it on social media. All of these venues, all of these outlets. I remember when we were younger, we were guarded. There's a song that says, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. We have to be careful because deception is out there and it's more rampant now today than it was before. Parents, you got to sit down. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy, hey, when you wake up in the morning, when you're on the streets, when you come home at night, before you lay your kids down, get that word in them. Study the Bible with them. Teach them. Prepare them. We are, we are, we are destroyed for the lack of understanding and preparation. We're not preparing the young generation. We're just setting them among the wolves and the lions and they're being 
destroyed. One, because guess what? The enemy is attacking the families. Mm -hmm. If you never heard it before, hear it today. The enemy is attacking our families. So much so, in the Bible, it tells us, it gives the structure. It says, hey, a man who can't take care of his own home is not the man who should be running God's house. There's a structure. There's an order. But deception says, don't worry about the order. You could just do things any kind of way and you will be okay. And that's not the truth. We're being deceived and we have to pull the blinders from over our eyes in order to understand what it is we need to do. What it is that the will for God's life, God, what God's will for our life is so we can walk in God's will for our life. We got to walk in God's will for our life. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Let's not be deceived. In order not to be deceived, we got to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to the basics. Today, people lack common sense. They'll fall for anything. It's, people are so That's easily, they, we're easily deceived. I, I, you know, again and again, I say, we all have to have a belief system. If you have a belief system, it's harder to penetrate that wall because if you stand on what you believe, hey man, listen, people will tell you today, it's multiple gods. It's multiple ways to get to heaven. It's multiple ways to do things. And that's not the truth. There's only one way. God didn't leave multiple roads open. So much so the Bible says the road is thin and narrow. Not wide and open. It's not a highway. It's not an expressway. It's narrow. And we got to stay on that narrow road. On that narrow road. So I want to encourage you today. Deception. Deception leads to distractions. So many of us get distracted, chasing down the things of the world, chasing down the things that we feel that would make us happy, that would give us joy, that would make us have a better life. The best life that we can have is the one that we have through and in Jesus Christ. That's it. God is enough. And the enemy wants to convince you that he's not. But God is enough. He's got all by himself. God is enough. God is enough. I encourage you today. Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basic. Get in that word. Get your family together. Have devotion. It says you pray together. A family that prays together stays together. Get these values. Put them in your children. Make them understand. Ex explain obedience. It says obedience brings blessing, life, and prosperity. Disobedience comes with death, curses, and poverty. God has given us free free will to choose. Choose him. Choose him. Don't let the enemy distract you. And not just distract you, but don't let the enemy use you as a vessel to deceive to deceive others. So often today, we're not just being deceived ourselves, but we're dragging a trail of people with us. Mm -hmm. I often say there was a time where, you know, parents like, listen, I'm going to heaven and each and every man jack after me is coming to heaven with me. Everybody's coming to heaven with me. Today, folks be like, yo, I'm just trying to barely make it by myself on my own. I'm just trying to make it for myself. That's not how it was. Again, we want to encourage you. Our topic today is deception. If you have any questions or you want to call in or you, you, you have something that you'd like to say, uh, we want to open up the lines. We have about 12 minutes left. So at this time, we'll open up the lines. If you have something that you'd like to share, something you'd like to say on the topic of deception this morning, we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, we'll give you the numbers right now that you can call or you can uh, ask questions by our Facebook. But... Um, Let's get the numbers, please. All right. The numbers are 342 and 466-5391. 466-5391. You can call now and chat with um, Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr. and his wife, um, it's Nikki Garcia. <laughs> and they're going to say Julia. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. 
So, uh, you know, again, uh, again, you know, uh, I want to encourage everyone this morning, man. Like, you know, no matter what changes around you, right, Jesus is still the same. The rules are still the same. The rules haven't changed. Don't let nobody convince you. Don't let people convince you. You know, don't go someplace and and, and compromise and lower your standards. And, and, you know, and and, and, hey, hey, guess what? In these days, when you don't do, when you decide to do what is right, people are going to be angry and people are going to be upset. You know, in the Bible, it tells us that the apostles, they were, you know, they were persecuted. They were persecuted. They were persecuted for the gospel, right? They were persecuted for standing up for what was right. They were persecuted for, for you know, for, for, for choosing Jesus. And guess what? If somebody's going to be mad at you or angry with you, don't, don't fall victim to peer pressure. Don't fall victim to somebody else's feelings being hurt because you will, you know, because you take a stand for the Lord. That's deception. And sometimes it's the people closest to us will make us feel bad. Well, you know, I really want to, you know, I really want to do this or do that. You know, they're going to be mad at me. You know, no, you know, it, it's so funny that when Christians are invited somewhere and they, they say, Hey, look, you know, that's not something that I do. People get bad. They get angry and they get say, see, you know, you always acting funny. You see this, you know, this, why this is why this is why. But the minute we invite somebody to church, that's they have so every excuse why they can't come. Why they can't make it, you know? Uh, what's the? Pro- I don't have, you know, this and that, and 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 you're not allowed to be mad because you're going against their belief. That's what they tell you, man. I don't believe in that, man. I'm not gonna have nobody to force me to do something that I don't believe or I don't do. But the minute that you stand up for what you know or what you believe is right, then you know, then then you know, then then folks get angry, they get mad, and they get upset, and we fall into this 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 guilt trip. If you're standing up for Jesus, there's no reason, there's absolutely no reason to be ashamed, to be embarrassed, to, you know, to, you know, to feel guilt. Because guess what? The Bible tells us if we deny the Lord, right, here on earth, then when we get before his father, then he'll deny us. And, you know, choose. We got to choose. Free will. Here goes this thing called free will again. We have to choose to do right we have to choose to do right we got to choose so let's not be deceived let's not be deceived we have to stop being deceived it, there's so much deception going on all around us every single day from the minute you walk outside your house from the minute you turn your tv on from the minute you you, you pick up your phone it's just it's, it is every single where and it's easy to be drawn into it it's, it, it's, it, it, it looks good. It's extremely easy to be drawn into it. Hence the reason I want to encourage you today. You got to be grounded in your word. The Bible says, "Study and find you know study you to show yourself approved. and show yourself approved." You know, hey, the, the the excuse of well, I didn't know. That's not a valid excuse because the Bible is here. So much so, it's so much more convenient. You all you got to do if you got a phone, you pick up your phone. You, you download the app. It's right there in front of your face. The same way we can access all of the other information that's not good or that's, you know, that's not, you know, things we should be reading or things we should be doing or, or, or sites we should be visiting. It's the same way you have access to your word. It, so understanding is available to us. As a matter of fact, the Lord says, hey, ask me for wisdom and I'll give it to you. Ask me for wisdom. Ask me to be, you know, ask me for discernment. We gotta be. We gotta pray. One of the things that I, I that I make sure I do, and I encourage you to do this, is uh, when Jesus uh, was with the disciples before he left. Uh, you know, and he said the Holy Spirit was coming. One of the, the the simple prayers that Jesus prayed over his disciple, he said, "Lord, give them the wisdom and the understanding to understand Scripture." Sometimes, we'll, you know, people will open their Bible and they'll read something and they don't really understand it. They don't really get it. I encourage you not to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Before you open your word, open your mouth. Lord, as I open this Bible today, open my heart and open my mind to understand scripture. Open my heart and my mind, Lord, to, 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 be, to, to receive more of you and less of what 
the world says, to get more of you, to be closer to you. That is what deception doesn't want you to do. To keep my eyes, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm going through, look at the example of Job. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to stay focused on you. When Job was going through what he was going through, he had some friends to show up. And they had so much to say. But Job st stood his ground. Job had some beliefs. And no matter what nobody said, no wife, no friend, no wise person, I'm standing on what I believe God says. A belief system. When you don't have a belief system, then comes deception. Deception leads to distraction. Distraction leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. Too many of us are being destroyed. Our family lives, our individual lives, our children's lives. And, we're, and like, you know, like Carla said, we're passing it on from generation to generation to generation. And then before we blink our eyes, we end up in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that says, you should notice to me that in the last days, there will be difficult times. Mm -hmm. We end up in difficult times in our homes, in our family, with our children, because we're not grounded, because we've been deceived. Children are watching TV. Well, look at what this TV family do. You know, they're walking in, they're slamming doors. The world says you can't discipline your children anymore. You can't do this, and you can't do that, and you can't do this. Deception, deception. When we are deceived, it leads to destruction. It, 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 it leads to, 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 to destruction. So I just want to, um, we have a couple of seconds left, minutes left. And I just wanted to say, um, in James 4 and 7, it says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So resist the devil and he will flee. Come up from among all of that negativity, all of the sin, all of the things that you know. First, let's start with the things that you know you're doing that you're not supposed to do. Come from among that. Stop it. Stop it now. Secondly, light and darkness can't dwell in the same place. So if you start to get deep into your word, if you start to take a deep dive and write the word on your heart and actively work every day, every moment to submit yourself to God and his will, your light will start to become so bright that the enemy and all of the people around you who are not of that light will have to start to back away. They won't invite you to those places you aren't supposed to be. They won't be enticing you to do the things you're not supposed to do because your light will become so bright that God will be shining through you. It will no longer be you, but it will be God that's working through you. And you'll start to touch those people. So as we as we close out today, I want to remind you, as, I'm going to say this in closing, deception friends, family, saints, leads to deception, leads to distraction. A lot of us are running around today in this world and we are distracted. We're focusing on so many different things instead of what we ought to be focusing on because we have been deceived. And distraction leads to destruction. Let's stop being destroyed and let's refocus where we're supposed to refocus. Let's put our eyes back on Jesus Christ. Let's get in this word. Okay, let's accept God as our Lord and Savior. And I think my mom's on the line. I'm going to ask her to do our altar call. Mommy, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. I'm right okay. here. Praise the right. Lord. Wonderful, wonderful um, preaching this morning from both of you. It was wonderful. It was great. Praise the Lord. For those of you who have heard the word this morning and you need to accept Jesus into your life, to have this wonderful life of which um, Pastor Junior and Sister Nikki spoke about. And I can verify that because as from a child, I've known the Lord. And he goes to it every day. Just say this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me of my sins. I repent, oh God, this morning. Lord, your word says that the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who repents. And I am that sinner this morning. Come into my life today. And I will serve you, Lord. I make an oath to you today. I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. 
Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, son and daughter-in-law. I love you both. God bless you. Love you too. Well, uh, that's it for today, guys. And we will see you again next Thursday. Make sure you join us. Uh, God bless you. And you all have a wonderful day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Be blessed. Same to you. We want to thank Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr. and his wife, Nikki Garcia, for being with us today. We want to say to you all, continue to listen every Thursday morning from 10, um, from 9 till 10, where they will continue to share um, God's will with you. So we're getting ready to go to um, uh, Miss, um, let me see, where, where is it, where is it? Street and narrow. All right, so we're getting ready to go to street and narrow in a short bit. Hi, I'm Valentine Garcia. And I'm Nikki Garcia. Please join us on the final hour broadcast every Thursday at 9 a.m. on the street 919 FM radio. Every week, we will journey into the amazing Word of God. So please join us. See you then. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the Street 919 FM.